on the Noble Show. Uh, today, our guest is this man I've been looking for for a long time, and I believe he has a lot to share with us today on the show. Let's find out who he is. We'll be right back. This week on the Noble Show, our guest is Benny Fifi Asian. He's an actor and also the marketing and PR manager of Gassam Ghana Limited. Benny is a lover of family and also has a strong passion to support the less privileged. Benny on the Noble Show. Welcome back from the break. This is still the Noble Show. The show is proudly brought to you by C. Ryan Travels and C. Ryan Car Rentals. If you're looking for uh, anything in regards to traveling, your ticketing, your visa, or anything you need when you want to travel, you call C. Ryan Travels on 026 Today on the show, we'll be talking to Mr. Benny Fifi Ishen. He is the marketing manager and the PR person for Gassam, and also an actor. Welcome, Benny, to the show. Thank you, Bobby. Good it's, to see you. It's, yeah, yeah, good to see you. It's been like 10 years or 1,000 years. I know, it's been ages. <laughs> <laughs> what's up with you? What's up with you? What's going on? Well, life is happening, and um, it's from one slow mo to um, a fast one, and we go slow mo. We're living. But well, you're still looking good. You've not changed, though. I have, well, changed. I have become a bolo. No, <laughs> I don't see this as a bolo at all. It depends on where you're looking from. I, I was looking better before those times, not anymore. So I think so. I will allow you to do that self appraisal <laughs> so I will not come into this one. But you're still looking good anyway. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And you're looking great yourself, too. Thank you. Yeah, as always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know a bit about you, but tell us, tell us about yourself. Who is hmm. Benny? Yeah, interesting question. Normally... When you hear that, it sounds like you're going for an interview, uh, either for a visa or for a job, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Benefifia Shen is, uh, was given birth to by Thomas Quirkwishen of Blessed Memory. He passed so many years ago when I was about 12. So I was born uh, some 47 years ago. Uh, I have um, two siblings. Uh, Beswa Dobuna Hamon used to be Betty Shen or Beswa Shen. Okay. used to host uh, a couple of programs on TV, TV3, TV Africa, GH1. Now she works uh, in corporate world. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, my brother, my only blood brother, uh, whom I lost, he was a musician. Uh, Mobile 2003. I attended FASPIM, same school. I know uh, you're a proud member because I've seen you displaying it. I'm a proud member, yes, <laughs> with no apology. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, we lost um, my brother. And for the MOBA 2003, uh, they know him as Pabek, um, musician, bad musician. He could have had a great promise, but, but passed. Yeah. Um, we give that glory to God. We don't know why, why he had to go that early. But um, now married uh, with uh, three children. Oh. Brianna, Bernie, and Benny JR. Oh. Where did you get so, those names from? They are beautiful oh, names anyway. Thank you. They all have, na they have, they have meanings. They say there's something in the name. Huh? Okay, so Brianna, what does it mean? Brianna is um, a hero. And the other uh, one? Like a bear, as bold as a bear. Bernie, similar, bold as a bear, but uh, a leader. Mm -hmm. And Benny JR is me, this guy who never sleeps, always until uh, what is on his mind is achieved, okay. or vision is achieved. So very determined person, very kind heart-hearted person, always full of life, loves to have life, mm -hmm. but it's quite an emotional person as well. Oh. So that's, I, I saw that in my son, even before he was born, mm. and I wanted him to be a better version of me, so I gave him, actually, to put the record straight, I didn't give him that name. Sometimes people like me and say, you gave your entire name to your son. Oh, no, okay. it's, my, it's my wife, actually. Oh, okay. Maybe she wanted to see... Um, me beyond when I when I'm no more here. That is, okay. if she's still here. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up in Dan Soman. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, Dan Soman, Saint Martin de Porres, for my preparatory school, and I'm one of those batches that uh, old system batches that ran away from the new system. So um, around that time in 1988, there about I had to go to uh, be enrolled in a school in Kanishi called West One and Six where I wrote my common entrance. Did extremely well, so had my first choice, which was in Fanspin. Um, unfortunately, uh, same year I was told my dad passed. He was a seaman and a mechanical mm. engineer, but I think we'll, we'll talk more about him later on. 
in that particular episode. But God being so good, I had some intervention, went through infant swim from infant swim. An uncle of mine says, um, when you're done with school, you have to now be looking for a job. But if you go and teach or be trained as a teacher and teach, your job is always assured. So from a first swim form five, I had to enter the training college in Kumasi, Wesco, Wesley College, the best uh, college in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm grateful for my parents for one thing. I went to the best schools, to be honest. I, yeah, with, with no apology. <laughs> but kudos to Auntie Esther, my mom, and my, my dad who passed away so many years ago. So trained as a teacher and did my A-level same time when I was being trained as a teacher. So came out with a, a three-year post-certificate um, postgraduate or post secondary certificate to teach. Taught two years in the practice school of Wesley College. And one of the students I always trumpeted my, myself about is uh, Anika, a Chandler Kwame's wife. And oh. to date when she sees me, she says, Sir Benny. <laughs> <laughs> she calls me Sir Benny. Anika, stop calling me Sir Benny. So, um, taught, came back into, my dad wanted me to be an architect. So I attempted to do what he wanted me to do, even though he was no more. I applied for the architecture uh, course at KNUST USD at the time. I wasn't taken for what reason, I don't know, but um, a very good friend of mine said, you know what, I've seen that bit of you, because growing up, I've always been in the theater arts business, dancing competitions in dance. Man, for those of you who grew up in First Stop, if you remember the episodes in Kojo Bar Stop at First Stop, dancing competitions, drama competitions. It was um, an avenue to bring up talents within our, amongst us in Dan Soman. And so most people who are in the arts now or are musicians like Samini or these great guys came from Dan Soman because we had a certain, if you want to liken to football, course system that brings up talents like that. So I said, let me come to School of Performing Arts. Why not? I jumped into School of Performing Arts as opposed to architecture. So I graduated as a theatre artist um, ended up as the president of the School of Forming Artists. And I think through that, I have been around the world through that. An uncle of mine, when I got admission to Legon and I was uh, at the School of Forming Arts, called me and said, An infante, what's your school now? Because has a university. Your course is Dundumbo. So they call it Dundology. <laughs> yeah, now I didn't think I the man. No, I am a proud product of that school. And you see, there are a lot of things people do not know about performing artists. That creativity that you are trained with, which brings out the best in you in terms of your thinking capabilities and solving problems, and people overlook that. But to date, especially for, from where I work, I'm in charge of events, by the way, at Gassim. And everything I've done from my public speech presentation skills and everything has come from my training as a performing artist. Okay. Okay. But beyond that, I, I think I, I turned it into something more than just a performing artist where you found on stage, you do an Uncle Bohai production or you, before the cameras, to do some movie and all that. I, so is that, but how, you studied uh, uh, art, right? Yeah. How did you get into uh, marketing? What, good, what? good question. So I still had that vision to set up a, a recording studio and a production setup of my own. And so um, when I finished uh, School of Forming as University of Ghana, I ended up, I traveled around the world, like I said, but I ended up in the UK to school at Leeds, uh, Leeds College, and I studied media production. So how to handle the camera, depth of field, how to you know, pan, how to tilt, how to do all the camera tricks and all that, and also editing. At the time, we are using Adobe Premiere, so I could just sit on an editing bench and do my stuff. And so I was equipped to come back home and set up a media outfit for myself. I did came back home and do that, actually by virtue of marriage, because when I married, my wife wanted us to come back home, so I had to come home. My dream was to stay in the UK or to be uh, in the US somewhere and live life there, because when I saw my media production job, I saw Hollywood. I didn't see Gollywood or Nollywood, but eventually I ended back, uh, uh, back in Ghana. At what um, stage in your life did you, at what age did you start act acting? from when I was growing, like five years, six years. And so why didn't you take it like a full-time job? Why did you decide? See, I have a whole story. If you can do a whole program on this one, <laughs> time, if you have time. Because I believe that if people in the arts are paid well and we regulate our industry well, some of us wouldn't have ended up in corporate world. But you see, there's one thing following that passion you have and another thing actually having the benefits of it. 
I've told you about my family, and if you see my family, they, they're not quite an exotic family, but they like the best things in life. Okay. And to be able to afford all that, the best schools like I had for my parents, you need to be able to do a good job that puts food on the table. And I couldn't get that from the ads. Okay. Listen, don't believe the hype. When all these fantastic yeah. outlook you see on the, the big artists that we have and, and celebrities and all that, they don't get all their money from the acting they do and the, and the music they sell and all that. No, they do something beyond that. And I, I thought that if the industry is regulated well, I could have found my place in this industry and I would have been here, you know, paid my dues in there. <laughs> so to talk about how I got into marketing. So when I came back and I set up the media uh, outfit, I had a recording studio in Adenta. Eventually, I had to go learn how to manage a business. So I ended up at Gimpa. Okay. Uh, of uh, public management. I mean, uh, it's a Ghana Institute of uh, Management and Public Administration, I think, to manage uh, my business. So I did a, a CBA, a postgraduate certificate and a postgraduate diploma mm -hmm. uh, specifying in marketing communications. And so to an extent, I, I, did, um, I was part of the transition from uh, Space Phone to Ariba, Ariba to MTN. Okay. I was working closely with Originate at the time. Uh, the owner, uh, the originator, the founder, Junior, was a very good friend. So jobs that are like overflow for Originate, they have a lot of pressure on them from MTN, they can't deliver, it comes to my recording studio. And oh. by the way, I'm, I'm a good voice beyond, uh, behind a lot of uh, uh, radio ads, but you know, tell that it's me. Yeah, let me just ask this silly question. Yes. Um, your wife, I know you are really into your wife. What's the first thing you told what her? What makes wife? you think I'm really into my because wife? Because I see you display her pictures all over. <laughs> So what was the first thing you told her when you first met her? Do you remember? This story is one of a... No, a, I just want the first line you told I, her. I'm hoping that I can remember. Okay, well, what was one thing you told her the first time that you can never forget before you go for the break? Okay, so um, I asked her why she wants to be in my life. Ah, but you just met somebody and you, you think she was... You want to go for a break, so I'll explain why. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, let's take a break and be right back. Are you planning a trip or you're going for a holiday with a lot of destinations all over the world? Just decide on where you want to go and see Ryan Travels will take you there. We offer you a visa, air ticketing, tour packages, hotel reservations, corporate travels, and many more. You can contact C Ryan Travels on 0264 623091 or 0302 40 8067. You can email C Ryan Travels at c.ryantravels at gmail.com. C Ryan Travels, you pack, we plan. Welcome back from the break. This is still the Noble Show, and we are talking to the amazing. Fine, Benny. <laughs> Benny, before we went for the break, I was asking you a question about your wife, right? Yeah. Okay, so what was the first thing you told her when you met her? You see, my wife warned me before I came on with you that I should not come and discuss her. And now you're pushing me to do that. I, I have to press you, the button. You only get me into trouble. <laughs> yeah? No, I, I, I'm so into my wife, and you know that, as you, you mentioned. But I, I try to hide her. That first thing I said to her was... Um, why she wants to be in my life. And it is so because at that time I thought she was too good for me. Oh, wait, you meet a woman and you ask her why she wants to be in your life. Yeah. How, did, how are you sure you wanted her, she, she wanted to be in your life? You see, you're making me say things I'll get into trouble for. Okay, let me just say, <laughs> so this woman saw me and for, for the uninitiated woman out there who meet a fine guy and you want to be with and you are afraid, <laughs> just take that bold step and go. So my wife actually approached me and befriended me, and one thing led to the other. Then I took my role now as the man and did the need for. <laughs> she would not agree with this one, but that is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into your life. Uh, considering the fact that you have um, gone through a lot of education, you try to adjust with every situation that comes your way from what you just told me. Um, how, how did you know that you would be Benny today? Did you know you'd be this man today? No. It's just by the grace. And as you mentioned, from a first man for my O-level, A-level, private candidate, Wesley College trained teacher, 
uh, taught for two years, uh, School of Performing Arts, so eventually ended up becoming an actor, ended up in the UK uh, media production, so media guy, technical guy, and then came back, learned to manage business. Finally, I have my executive MBA in marketing. Oh. And all this has been by grace. Um, it got to a point where when I applied even for my executive MBA, I was told by the school, the same school that I did my CBA and DBA, Gimpa, that I didn't qualify to do an executive MBA. Why? Because I did a school of performing arts, which was like okay. a, a national diploma. Okay. So basically they were telling me I didn't have a first degree. Okay. But I ended up doing a, a postgraduate certificate and a postgraduate diploma in marketing and eventually ended up to do my executive MBA at the University of Ghana Business School. And today, oh. I'm the face of the University of Ghana Business School. Whoa. If you're entering that university, you, you should see my face and Barbara Gazy. <laughs> so it's okay. just by the grace. Yeah. Um, sometimes God picks the nothing to be everything. And so I don't take that for granted at all. Um, the fact that I've come through the ranks, done all the stuff that I can do, it's not been easy. But the rough and smooth have brought me thus far by the grace of God. Yeah. Okay, um, in some few minutes, let's say three, four minutes, share your success story with me. Hmm. Success story. I don't see myself as a successful person. But I know you have come a long way. I have come a long way. Um, I mentioned to you when I was entering in fast swim in 88 that my dad passed. And for me, that would have been the end of my dreams. But um, even though I was a Methodist at the time, ICGC, Dr. Mensah Otebeo's ICGC at the time. I was one of the first batch of people to be given a scholarship. They called it the needy but brilliant uh, students. So somehow when I was interviewed, they felt this is a brilliant chap, but doesn't have the means to go to school. So my first choice was going to be in water, in France, but they offered to pay my fees for me and take me through school. I've come from there. Before then, when my dad passed, I used to sell. I was a hawker in Kanishi. Oh. My mom would send me with the house help at the Trotro station, in Dansuman Trotro station in Kanishi. Mm -hmm. And I'll have, at that time, we used to sell the iced water. It was with cups. The gray cup was for me, the silver one, to fetch the water. And if you were buying, yours would be a green or a blue or a yellow. Oh. And I fetch and I have to pour in for you. Sometimes someone drinks the water, it doesn't taste nice and can throw it in your face. Yes. Oh, so you see, God has taken me through that. Matom Banchida. Yeah. Hey, Benny. Yeah, my tongue It's a whole interview you can have. You don't have time for this one. I've sold kerosene before. I've sold Kane Grazine. <laughs> By the grace Whoa. of God today, I'm a marketing and PR manager for Gasem, and I don't take it for granted I've been through it. So, but how, I'm how not many there years yet. have you been with Gasem? Um, 13 years in still counting. So, how are you able to make time to act? Because it's a corporate world and, world and you would always yeah, be needed. Right. Yeah. I, I do not, I make sure my work is priority for me. If I have to be at work, I'm at work. If I take a leave, I normally have like 30 days leave in a year. If I take a leave, oh. um, it's relaxing for me to do the passion that I have, which is to act. And sometimes uh, music. As you see, Nobulin Ketia is a good friend of mine. Uh, maybe to teach me how to turn this into a commercial business sometime. Because when I sing here, you run. No, give me a line. Give oh, me a line. I beg. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take me there. <laughs> okay, okay, let's, let's do some acting. Okay, propose to me. Oh, my God. Oh, no, this is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I'd rather take the first option. Because okay. it would be difficult to propose to you for many reasons. And you know I can't tell you on air. Okay, so, okay, so, so sing for me. Hmm. Your favorite song, actually. Okay. Okay, so, Noble is here, so give us a Noble line. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, it's a Noble show, actually. So. What's your Noble song? Give me that, then I'll sing that. Baby, now I am a Okay. <clears throat> I think I'd rather do... Oh, to a uh, man, no, right? Oh, my, my to, my to okay. Show. But I like um, Moses O'Kay's... Uh, uh, Mina Mini, uh, like, Mina, is it Mina Mini or... Something to do with the fact that God. No, 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 uh, not that one. Uh, oh, stop the camera now! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just give me any song you, you like the most, any gospel song. Oh, because okay. I'm I'll, I'll sing so you can't sing the you song, song that I, I sang for my wife, and you should like it. Maybe I should sing that for you, okay. since you want me to propose to you. <laughs> this is what I, I sang to her on, on our wedding day. <clears throat> Oh, 
just the way you are. Right, Barry White. Don't go changing, trying to please me. You never let me down before. I don't imagine you're too familiar. And I don't see you anymore. I would not leave you in times of trouble. And would have never come this far. Oh no, I took the good times and I'll take the bad times. I'll take you just the way you are. I can imagine <laughs> him. I can imagine her blushing when oh, you're yeah, saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Benny, uh, we are going to we are going to take a part two of you again because we have a lot to talk mm. about. But uh, before we end today's edition of or section of the show, what will be your last words on the show? My last words would be um, the God factor should be big in our life because we can move out of where we are to the next area, and anything can happen. Just about anything. These days, we talk about COVID, and it used to be a news that you hear on the, you know, the media wavelength, but there are people who are close to us who are passing. And I tell myself, if you have all the things that you have, and you don't have God, what do you have? Nothing. So the God factor should be big for you. It depends on what you worship. I worship God, the Almighty God. And let God be big in your life. It will take you places. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you, my sure. dear. We talk again. All right. It's been an awesome time here today with my darling Benny on the Noble Show. The show is probably brought to you by C. Ryan Travels and C. Ryan Car Rentals. Thank you so much for sticking and staying with us today on the Noble Show. See you sometime next week. My name is Dr. Gabriela. Bye bye.